In this short video, I'll cover some core concepts of networking and web services on mobile devices and codename one. First, and most importantly for those of those of you those of you, those of you co-op or server worlds, this might not be a shock that network on mobile devices is unreliable. However, the extent of this is sometimes surprising to developers who are new to mobile. That's why many low-level networking strategies are discouraged on mobile devices. Another big surprise for developers is that Apple literally blocks HTTP on their devices unless you have a really good excuse. If you try to connect to HTTP from an app that doesn't explicitly enable that, the connection will just fail. You need to use HTTPS or ask for a special permission. Notice that if you ask for that permission and don't have a good enough reason, your app will be rejected from the App Store. Sockets are usable on mobile devices, but they are flaky and hard to use across NATs and devices. We only got server sockets working reliably on Android. They are possible on iOS, but they are pretty different there. As a solution of sort to some of these issues, web sockets have ris risen in recent years and are shaping up to be a very interesting mid-range option. The most common networking API in Codename 1 is Connection Request, which is paired with the Network Manager. It's inspired by JavaScript's asynchronous networking, but tries to provide more low-level control. The Connection Request API was developed with a goal of extreme portability and best practices built in. It's seamlessly threaded and can automatically work with the EDT as a asynchronous or asynchronous API. We also have some support for the URL class, which helps port Java SE code to codename one. It doesn't use the Network Manager API and goes directly to the low-level APIs. As a result, you need to take care of threads yourself and might need to work through some low-level differences in behavior between platforms. We have two socket implementations. One is built into codename one and works asynchronously through a callback. The other was implemented as a CN1 lib and is a lower level, level API that works directly with the streams. Sockets are inherently very low level and are an advanced API to use. Web sockets serve as a middle of the road approach. They are implemented as a CN1 lib as well, but use a simplified asynchronous callback API. Since common servers already support web sockets, the server side should be a breeze. They are relatively easy to work with and allow sending messages back and forth from the server. Before we go to the code, notice that in order to use this code, you will need to import the CN class statically. Creating a hello world get request is as simple as adding a new connection request to the queue. Notice that the second document indicates that we are marking making a get request and not a post request, which is the default. Also notice that the request is asynchronous, so it might not have completed after the add to queue call. So how do we get the actual data from the URL? There are three options. First, we can override read response and read the stream directly. This is arguably the best approach as we will only read the data once. Read response is invoked on the network thread 
so make sure not to change the UI from that method. That is a good thing though, as all your processing won't block the event dispatch thread and won't slow the app noticeably. The second option uses a response listener to get the result from the connection request. Notice that a response listener occurs on the event dispatch thread, so this will slow down execution slightly, but you will be able to make changes to the UI directly so the code will be simpler. The same is true about the last and arguably simplest option. When you use add to queue and wait instead of add to queue, the current thread is blocked using invoke and block, and we can then extract the data. This is pretty convenient for simple requests, and we use that often for those cases. The built-in sockets use an asynchronous API, where the callback method is invoked once connect connection to the server is established. At that point, you will have a thread with two streams, and you can just read or write from the streams as you see fit. Web sockets are easier. You just receive messages and can send them using the WebSocket API. Notice that you shouldn't send any message before on open was invoked, as you might fail badly. WebSockets are excellent for APIs like chat, where a server might trigger a message to a device without the device making a request. This is far more efficient than approaches such as polling, which can result in serious battery drain and low performance. I've mentioned URL before, and indeed you can use the codename one URL to port existing code. But this also begs the question, why not use URL instead of connection request? Threading is hard would be the first and obvious answer. This is especially true on devices where QA needs to go far and wide. Connection request has some built-in capabilities that bind directly to the ADT. For instance, add to queue and wait, progress indicator, etc. URL is inherently less portable since it is low level and might expose platform behaviors that you don't expect. A common example is different redirection behavior on 302 for the various OSs. Web services can be implemented in many ways in Codename 1. A common approach is the web service wizard, detailed in the developer guide. It generates method calls that map to server code and allow us to generate a remote function invocation on the server. You can use connection request to invoke REST APIs from the client. You can use one of the third party or built in APIs to connect. We have some great APIs such as the REST API that lets you invoke server code with almost no effort. You can use the built in JSON and XML parsers as well as the result class for expat expression style parsing. You can also use some of the third-party parsers for JSON and XML in the CN1lib section. Here is a sample REST request from the kitchen sink. You will notice that there isn't much here. We just parse the data and pass it on based on the response. We've ported that older kitchen sink code to use the new REST API. And this code is even easier. It removes the need for additional classes and can be chained to generate a short expression. We just get a result as a past map we can work with, which is very convenient. This API also has an asynchronous version, which is similarly convenient. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this useful.